So we begin with silk plus plus keywords. Um, the first keyword is the keyword silk four. And what you do is you use it very much the way you would use an ordinary four. Okay, you just put it in front of uh, a um, uh, condition and then you do it. So this, for example, is matrix transpose. Okay, so we're iterating i gets 1 to n, uh, j gets 0 to i, and uh, then uh, switching, letting b, the output of the transpose, be a of j i. So basically, uh, uh, b ends up being the transpose of a. Now, the SOAP 4 says that all the iterations execute in parallel. So here we've got doubly nested. So it says that not only can I, uh, can I uh, go through each uh, row uh, one at a time, and all the rows I can do in parallel, then for each element within each row in each column, I can do those in parallel. Uh, one of the requirements is the index be declared in the loop initializer. So you cannot say declare i out in front and then use it. You must declare i to be used within the loop itself. Second uh, restriction is the end condition is evaluated exactly once at the beginning of the loop. So the end condition is evaluated, i less than n is evaluated once. And so uh, if you are in your original for loop, uh, you are evaluating the end condition each time through. Uh, then that's not going to uh, necessarily give the same uh, result unless each time through it produces exactly the same value. So for typical for loops that are sort of using Fortran style loops, uh, that's going to be true for something that's more like a while loop use. Uh, that wouldn't be true and it wouldn't be an appropriate candidate for uh, using a SOAP 4. Um, the alpha product is restricted to integer loops that increment by one, as is shown here. Uh, more general loops will be available uh, in the beta product. Okay? So we'll have uh, generally uh, very general type of loops, but for now it's restricted to, uh, to this simple type of loop. Um, so that was one keyword, silk4. The other two keywords are, um, are silk spawn and silk sync. So here I'm using, illustrating it using the example of quicksort. So the idea of this quicksort is it takes an array uh, uh, range, and as long as, uh, and it's going to sort things recursively. So if you recall how quicksort works is it takes an array, it then finds an element sometimes called the pivot, and it partitions the array to everything less than the pivot, everything greater than the pivot, and the pivot itself, and then it recurses on the two halves. And that's basically what's going on here. We find a middle element by calling the partition routine, and this uh, code essentially finds that uh, middle element. And then we uh, call uh, quicksort on the first part of the array and then on the second part of the array. And what we've done here is we've indicated by the silk spawn keyword that this child, namely the, the recursive qsort here, uh, can execute in parallel with the parent caller. Okay? And what the parent then goes on to do is start quicksorting the second part of the array. So basically the two parts of the array are now being sorted in parallel. Well, this uh, silk plus plus supports nested parallelism. So each of those Q sorts, recursive Q sorts, now is going to uh, operate on, uh, you know, call the same function, and each of those is going to go through the same spawn. And so in the end, you get this tree of recursion of things that are basically in parallel. And it's up to the silk plus plus scheduler to schedule that appropriately on the uh, processors. Now, before you can return, uh, we execute the silk sync. What that says is don't go past, don't let the parent control go past this until all the children have completed. Okay? So, uh, and in fact, this is actually a redundant one for this because uh, before you return, uh, silk plus plus always executes a silk sync. So this uh, keyword says control can't pass this point until all the spawn children have returned. Those are the three uh, silk plus plus uh, keywords that you use for uh, for you know 95 percent of your programming in Silk Plus Plus. So now let's talk a little bit about what it means for something to be serially correct. 